Standard and your week, and we gladly welcome you to our Breakfast TV show. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, we are wishing you, uh, from the studio here, a productive week. My name is Chidima Oranwa. You're welcome to Good Morning Anambra, this beautiful Monday morning. And I'm here with my colleague. Good morning, India Anambra. All right, you are going to uh, bring your way the stories that we have on National Delis. Well, we are starting with the stories on our website this morning. And we already have our reviewers seated with us in the studio this morning. But let's take a short break. When we come back, we introduce them to you. Stay with us. Welcome back, and our, our reviewers this morning are Usta Eze. Usta Eze is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Usta. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Anambra. We also have Samuel Ololo. He is a public affairs analyst. Samuel, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. I remember asking you when you came in. No, it was Andrew that asked you that question. And what was your response to that question? When he was asking me if the Lord has spoken. Yes. <laughs> Since I just saw him, if I come with the enemy, <laughs> that, and for some reasons, the Lord has been a kind of quiet. Quiet, right. And we to to him, and he speaks to us. All right. Um, we are starting the show this morning with the stories that are trending on our website this morning. And uh, the first story we have on our website, reactions to increase in child molestation. Anambra State Government worries over incessant uh, fire outbreaks. Mrs. Soludori assures of justice for maid abused by a guardian in Onitra. Okay, um, these are the stories we have on our website this morning. Let's start with you, Osta. Uh, the, uh, the first and the last story, they are almost the same thing, talking about child molestation uh, right here in Anambra State. I think it's on the increase. And uh, the Ministry of Women Affairs and Children, they've been trying to hard to see that they reduce this violence against children and women to the barest minimum. Uh, so what's your thought on that? The truth is, there's this thing about our culture that kind of um, encourages uh, corporal punishment on children. And um, there's this thin line between corporal punishment and uh, child molestation mm. and um, abuse of the rights of the child. And it is that thin line that many of our people tend to uh, be blind to, and which is why we have this high uh, incidence of child molestation in Anambra State. I think there's a need for us to start reorienting uh, ourselves with respect to how we discipline uh, children, that our children and uh, uh, children that are placed under our, okay. our care. Uh, we need to understand that we don't really need to uh, express frustration, anger on them. Uh, in, in the name of that we are disciplining them, which, is, which has been the trend over the years. Many of us grew up under such, uh, such experiences mm. and then we tend to now continue same in this present age. But you find out that presently everything is on social media. It's easy for many of these things to be reported to the general public and for the public to, to judge you know, such actions, and which is why it seems as if it's on the increase. But the truth of the matter is that We've always been, so to speak, molested and um, over-disciplined, let me put it that way, by our parents, our guardians, our seniors in secondary school, our, and, and what have you, whoever it is that has you know, powers over us. Most times, our, our bosses even, many of us get slapped in the name of that we are um, employees in our workplaces. And people get away with these things, but we need to understand that at this present age, you can't get away with such things anymore. And we need to start, um, changing the way we, 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 we want to correct those we feel we have authority over. You must not shout over the child, you must not even beat the child. And you need to seek for psychological help if you, if you see that you cannot control your anger. 
these are some of the things that we don't do in this part of the world and which is why many times it becomes so <coughs> symptomatic and you find children who are lacerated all over their body with canes and mm. all whatnot. Probably the person who is doing that thing is sick herself or himself. So these are some of the issues that we need to make, bring to the front burner of uh, our conversation and start seeking for um, uh, solutions to them. And another uh, uh, thing I need to highlight here is that many times we tend to quickly condemn uh, people, people that uh, fall victim to child molestation. Many of these people might have been victims of molestations themselves and they are now <coughs> meting it out on the people that they find uh, are under their care and they might need help. I'm not trying to justify it, but while the Ministry of uh, uh, Children and Women Affairs is trying to bring many of these people to justice, they need to understand that there's also a human aspect to these things and uh, try to see if there are, we have psychologists who are trained to look into such matters and rehabilitate such persons besides uh, bringing them to, to book. All right, thank you so much. Samuel? Uh, do you also share the same sentiment with him, talking about these people, that some of them might, they might have psychological problem and probably they need to be checked before, you know, prosecuting them? Okay, so uh, for me, the way I'm saying this, I, I completely align myself with what um, Oster has said earlier. Really. Uh, but I, I think there's a missing link for us in Nigeria. And that missing link is we have really failed to document and carry out researches when needed. And societies just don't develop. I tell you, uh, there are people who are very, very intentional about what they do towards <coughs> making the society to develop. And that is the documentation of these molestations. How is it being done? What led to the molestation? I mean, we need to begin to get into that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has happened. Why the perpetrators should be punished? I think also we should find the reasons why these things happen. It is not once, it is not twice, and it has been repeatedly reported. So if we find why it happens, then it makes us go to the root towards addressing it, instead of just talking about it on the surface. So for me, I, I think we need to encourage, as a gov the government now needs to encourage the psychologists, the clinical psychologists, and our students who are in that field to begin to carry out, conduct more researches in these areas, I bet you what it is going to unearth might make us find out that it could be the state of the economy, it could be so Nigerians have been battered a lot and people vent this through many um, areas. And then the, the news that, was, that is talking about an uh, instant fire outbreak, mm. I, I tell you somebody who, of course, this is not the first time it happens, it has always been a repeated situation, that is enough to throw somebody off balance and they would not be thinking in the right senses anymore. At any little provocation, you see them meeting it up on their wife, on their children, some other times on their mate. So I think as a nation, we need to come together and find out that development must be holistic and not tilted towards any particular individuals, family or groups. All right, thank you so much. And um, let's go to you the want first. To add yeah, I wanted to also say something about this uh, incessant fire outbreaks. I was thinking that there is a law in, in, in Anambra State that uh, dissuades people from burning refuse. But you find that people still do it and nobody gets um, punished for it. And many times you find that some of these fire outbreaks might be a resultant of uh, such uh, flagrant burning of refuse in our households. Besides the fact that this uh, burning of refuse uh, in our house, in the name of protecting ourselves from evil, because there was a time I accosted somebody on my street who was burning some um, pads and, uh, and uh, um, diapers, mm -hmm. used diapers. And I was asking her, why are you burning this? Don't you know you're constituting nuisance, air pollution, and all whatnot? And she told me that she doesn't want to dispose them in at the receptacle that is provided for disposing these things because she feels somebody will take the pads or the diapers and <coughs> do some diabolical things on them that will affect them. And yet to say that we're a Christian community, I don't get it. We need to start using the, that, the receptacles that have been provided for these things, for disposing refuse appropriately and stop burning uh, refuse. And this is one of the ways we can check 
these uh, incessant fire outbreaks in, in the state. Oh, thank you so much, Josita, on that submission. Now, quickly, let's begin with the first paper for review this morning. I think we'll be taking them two at a time in, because of want of time. And the first is the Daily Times. The banner headline screams, Ati Kutinibu in verbal war over forex crisis, Naira slide. Equities market up to 2.1 trillion to wrap up the week with 57.85 trillion gain. 85 trillion, 850 trillion gain. Tinibu meets Brazilian president, six stronger ties. A gunman kill plateau APC publicity secretary. A current economic mess created by MFLA, says Akbabio. Um, estate developers grown as bag of cement sells for 15,000 naira. NDLA intercept illicit drug consignment from US. And then the picture there, you see um, state government relocating, or will I say clearing the slum under the bridge there in Lagos, trying to send the squatters away. And then quickly, the Punch newspaper is saying, um, cost of living protests, police won against violence as labor gives fresh conditions. And the, the writer there says, avoid violence, police won labor. AFDB says hardship may lead to social unrest in Nigeria and others. Um, Naira weakens as banks' dollar sales plunge by 825, um, $252 million. Federal government marketers meet today. Tanker drivers insist on strike. Nigeria Brazil plan new MOU as trade drops by $8 billion. 15 trucks of smuggled foods intercepted in Sokoto. That's coming from the customs. And Navy seeks speedy trial of oil thieves. This and more we have for you this morning on the Daily Times and the Punch. But quickly, let's go to the Daily Times. Atiku Tinibu in verbal war over forex crisis and Naira slide. Osita, this was a government that knew what they were getting into because prior to assumption of office, they already knew that Nigeria was in the debt of over um, 80 trillion. And the, the, the present governor, I mean, president said that he was going to be hitting the ground running. And now he's having verbal war. This is not the first time, neither is it the second time we've seen on the pages of Nigerian dailies where Atiku, especially is attacking Tinubu based on his policies. Uh, what's your take on this over this forex uh, crisis and the Naira slide? At Daily Times would have focused uh, its uh, uh, banner headlines on solutions to some of these problems. Instead of telling us about um, tantrums being thrown by two adults and two uh, veterans for that matter, I don't really care what Atiku says to Tinubu or what Tinubu replies to Atiku with respect to the issues of forex crisis and the slide and the value of Naira. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the, 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 the phenomenon is here with us and we need to find lasting solutions to them. That's just the fact. And the box so, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the table of the president. The box. By making those policies of mm -hmm. subsidy removal without adequate cushioning effect, mm -hmm. that is what we are going through now. It goes beyond just the issue of subsidy removal. All right? There are several other economic policies, both the ones that are, uh, that were done, that are being done by the present administration and some, uh, some policies that, are, that influence us from IMF that are contributory to this devaluation of the Naira. If you remember in our O-level economics, one of the things, one of the conditions that IMF gives countries is to devalue their currency. I still don't find, I still don't, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around the, 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 the rationale behind this. And because why, you're not a productive uh, why, country. You uh, don't why, have anything to back the Naira that you have. No, we if are, you are into production and export, definitely mm -hmm. you have something to back your Naira. My your brother, Naira to the truth of the matter is that the powers that be, I'm talking about in the, on the global scene, do not want you to be a, product, a producing nation so that your raw materials will continue to be filtered away from you. So that you will not get the full value for the raw materials, the, the, the vast resources that your country has been blessed with. These are some of the issues we are not addressing. And we were fighting at the, uh, the bush rats while our house is burning. So the truth of the matter is that the problem of our forex, the problem of the valuation of our, of our currency goes beyond tantrums being thrown between two political juggernauts. 
I want to start looking beyond these things. I want to start seeing a situation whereby some of these news agencies will start be being the voice of the people instead of the voice of some of these people in power. Well, we got, we and, got, that's, we... and that's what's not happening. Why should this be the headline on uh, this newspaper? <laughs> when, they should be, when, we, when we have teething problems in, in our economy right now, yeah. and, and experts have a lot to say about it, we have people who have solutions. Why is nobody talking about these solutions if people are offering and making them the headlines of, of newspaper instead of tantrum being told by... These people are supposed to be people who are close to senile. They don't, they, I'm not sure they know fully well what they are even doing. They've enjoyed the fullness of their, of their time and they, are, they actually are ebbing away. And we still focus our attention on what they say. It doesn't make sense. It will, it will when we get to the next paper. Um, okay. um, I mean, to the next uh, um, headline, um, which is um, Current Economic Mess Created by MFLA, says Akbabio. Samuel, what's yes. your take on that? So, I, I think the essence of governance and government is to provide solutions to a plethora of issues yeah. that the citizens are faced. And unfortunately, the APC government, including the current Senate president that is talking, they have made us understand that they dwell more on propaganda and then blame games. Blame games. Because before now, when the last, during the, the time of the last administration under President Mohamed Buhari, everything that we are wrong with Nigeria was caused by the PDP. After then, they, they were able to begin to point at COVID. They were able to, every time they have things to call that it is the reason why it happens. Now, he has gone back to MFLA because MFLA is not there. What are they going to talk about? I think what they need to do is uh, we should get to a, a, a stage in the country where if you are overwhelmed by issues and situations, then you must just need to resign. If you think you cannot perform anymore, you don't need to stay there. We need to begin to take that office with the seriousness it deserves. What has MFLA done? Did MFLA act in, in silo? Why is it that every blame now is, is going towards MFLA because he's under trial? MFLA had his boss who approved some of the things he did. So what happens to it? Why have we not tried to tie what the decisions of MFLA to the approvals that he got? Why have we just sent him out MFLA? So this is to make us understand that we are, we are still dealing with government that still does not want to change. Because if they want to change, Beyond calling an MFLA, as Nigerians, we need to see the we need to connect the thoughts of the people and what they did, and not just say this person caused it. Okay, MFLA caused it. What next? After we are now eight months gone into the current administration, we are not even seeing any sign to show that what MFLA done or what he did when he was in power, when he was the CBN governor, are being reversed. Instead. The bars have been increased, and yet they are calling MFLA. Uh, this is for us to make them understand that the more they dwell on playing game, mm. the faster it is for Nigerians to go into social unrest. All right, and thanks. the state that it is not know what would happen if Nigerians hit the streets, and the time to stop it is now. All right, thank you so much for that uh, submission. Uh, could it be that uh, the present administration, they don't even have the power or the might to change some of the mistakes made by these people that or their mistakes are irreversible. I don't understand why they always do on the blame game. Now I'm just trying to add a, a point to what you have said. Probably they find it difficult to, you know, make the mistake, I mean, make it work again in this so, country. For, so, so that's me, why the they are blaming it, people for yeah, that. The that is wrong. And then another thing is they don't even want to face their stark reality. And the stark reality is they are battling from legitimacy issues. Because you just don't govern alone. Both the government and the citizens must come together to make things work. So the citizens don't even believe that these people are representing them. People see them that you force yourself in there. So do work with yourself, whatever you think you can do with yourself. That citizens' aspect that they need to contribute to make things work, they are just docile around it. And that is what they are battling with. So they should look at it headlong. And this is me using this opportunity to make INEC understand that elections have consequences. Once the citizens see that the people that they want are not in power, they turn off. And when they turn off, 
we see it play out in our everyday lives. All we right. We've seen it playing out, and then they are warning us that the police is warning against violence. As we, the we still get to that. That's Fresh the banner police. headline uh, in front of Vanguard. I want us to take it together because of want of time. So let's see what we have on the front page of Vanguard newspaper this morning. Uh, Hachi right paralyzing lives nationwide. This is coming from uh, Catholic bishops and can uh, says Nigeria in her worst times with insecurity, economy, graft, add hunger, causing serious humanitarian crisis. Federal government working to resolve economic challenges. Others, this is coming from SGF. And then down there, we can see the food, food crisis. Uh, fees governance, federal government, APC, lands PDP governors. Presidents, okay, we've talked about that. Uh, rising cost of living may lead to social unrest in Nigeria. Others, this is coming from AFDB. Uh, Naira depreciation, inflation, eroding value of insured assets. Edo 2024, APC gets a three candidate. ABWA threatens legal action. Uh, power grid drops to 3,530 megawatts as Russian in persist nationwide. Two of die as bandits set fire on 17 houses in Kaduna uh, village. Okay, uh, these and many others are what we have in the front page of Vanguard newspaper. So coming to you, Osta, I want us to look at this uh, protest that is looming. Uh, African Development Bank is saying that the rise cost of uh, living may lead to social unrest in Nigeria and others. And then uh, we have in the front page of the punch where the police are warning citizens not to engage in any uh, violence as a uh, labor gives fresh condition. Now, talking about this protest, going, coming out in the street to protest for high cost of commodities and all that, <laughs> to what extent would that even help us as Nigerians, I mean citizens of this country? And then again, the police coming to warn people already about what is happening. And you see how people, how frustrated people are. We just made mention of molestation, things happening around us, kidnapping everywhere. So every, if, you, if you touch someone on the street now, the person will abuse you. The person can even pour you acid. Is that bad? The truth of the matter is... Um while we grapple with the realities, the harsh realities with us right now, we also need to try to keep our heads you know, on our shoulders and, and realize that violence has never helped matters mm. in any society, all right, in history. Or rather, it will worsen our situation. We, well, the police, I think I will join, uh, I will join words with the police to warn that, you know, any form of public unrest or violence Will not, will not fetch us any good as a, as a people. What we really need to do is to start seeking for solutions. You know, one, one of the reasons I'm proud to be an Igbo man is because the Igbo man always seeks for solutions, all right? Somebody was asking the question, why is it that some of these, because there been, have been reports of arrest here and there in other parts of the yes. country, but none in, in, from the southeast. It doesn't mean that we are not, we are not also uh, having similar experiences with them from the rest of the country. But we, I think we are more realistic about how to go about some of these vicissitudes of life. We understand that when these vicissitudes of life come, first of all, we accept these uh, situations and then we'll start uh, seeking for ways to, to survive the situation. And I believe that's what we are doing for, uh, in these parts uh, uh, in the Southeast. And I want to encourage us from uh, wherever part of the country you're in, to understand that there's a need for us to start seeking for solutions. We need to tighten our belts. We need to understand that this thing has come to live with us. We need to start being more positive in our confessions because the more we confess negatively, hey, things are getting worse, hey, I'm going to die and all that, it, it, it only wasn't the way you, the mindset with which you, you contend with these conditions. So let's really try to find a way, though it's difficult for a lot of people, especially for those people who are the lowest rung of you know, the social uh, strata. There's a need for the government to also uh, look in the area of you know, social welfare. I saw um, on the social media that there were some persons, I think some mosques, that were sharing food items to their, their, um, their followers, all right? their congregants, and I was wondering why the Christian fold cannot replicate the same thing. Why is it that after church, everybody is just 
told me I will still go about Nudo, and people will still go back hungry. Meanwhile, you could have more than enough. People are building more houses, people are engaged in more projects. You could have millions of now, you have a lot of investments, filling stations, schools, and what have you, yielding money for you. And you don't and you don't think it's wise to start helping out some of these persons who are the lowest of the low, who are who cannot even afford a, a square meal a day in, in the in the in the in the face of what we are what we are faced with today all right so i think the, the the catholic bishop should go beyond just ranting on on the media and start doing something and start encouraging their priests and the, the pastors their pastor uh, counterparts to start putting hands into the coffers of the church's uh, money the money that was contributed by members of the church to start helping out these people who are the lowest rung of the social strata i believe that's one of the ways they can help to push on these things while we we continue to pray for the government to become more sane all right, um, coming to you, Samuel, uh, should we be excited about this new uh, friendship or uh, this tie between the president and the, uh, of Nigeria and that of Brazil, Inácio Lula da Silva? Uh, because from what we are seeing in the front page of Vanguard, they are just seated down there. And then the, 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 he said they are seated during the bilateral talks or the 37th Session African Union Summit in Addis Ababa. And then in the front page of, uh, I mean, the Daily Times that we have already uh, explored this morning, Tinibu meets Brazilian president seeking stronger ties. Okay, uh, if, if I make my honest opinion known, I, I might be a purveyor of hatred or fake news or whatever they want to call it. So let us go back and then look at the trend. That would help us come up to. Um, a same analogy. Uh, we are in a country where most of the times when our leaders embark on these trips, they come out or they come back to the country giving us promises. This is not the first time it's happening. Let us not forget that uh, the president, this current president, went to New York. Let us not also forget that they went for climate summit, climate change yeah. summit. And they have also gone <coughs> for a lot of uh, international trips with the promises that this is what they are going to do and how they are going to do it. Now, the fact and the truth of this whole thing is, if we are looking at it, even in Nigeria, it's obvious now that we dwell, well, we have governments that are more vocal than action-oriented. They use their mouth to say all that they intend to do. Uh, Buhari, for his eight years, also gave us litanies of projects and contracts and agreements that they were going to attract to Nigeria. And now he has left. Nigeria is even more broke than we were when he came on the seat. So for me, um, I would just say, let us watch and see. But looking at the realities on ground, these people are not aliens. They are on ground. They see that some industries in, Nigerians, in Nigeria are leaving. So I wonder what would make them want to come down to Nigeria to invest, mm. really. Uh, we are yet to see that. So that is why we are really telling the government to understand that the cost of living, the standard of living of Nigerians must be, must be improved. And Nigerians must be seen to be patriotic. And patriotism is done by it. These things come naturally. It is what Nigerians talk about their country that would even make other investors become interested to come and invest. If not, it is just mere... Uh, for the headlines. And this is coming at a period when some already international companies are exiting Nigeria. Many, many are exiting. And not, not just that they're exiting Nigeria and going back to their countries. Then we say maybe they're, they're, maybe they're even They are going to other they're countries. To other <coughs> Africa. neighboring African countries to show you that there's something wrong with Nigeria as a country that is not conducive for them anymore. All right, let's take the next paper, the Independent. Um, next paper for review this morning is um, the Daily Independent and the Nation. And the banner headline says, um, Forex crisis shrinks Nigerian Airlines aircraft to 44 from 107. And then the riders, they say, 63 commercial airplanes grounded. Industry bleeding, federal government helpless stakeholders. Um, military warns against incursion at Lagos Airport's airside. Um, why we upheld jail term, 20 million fine against XBPE boss, Oku, Supreme Court. AU summit, Tinubu in talks with La Lola da Silva. Despite CBN push, Naira falls to all time low. And then the writer says, um, trade at one 
1,700 naira per dollar, uh, 1,537 um, naira at the parallel market official window. Analysts say FX crisis requires physical sites major effort. Uh, federal government chides um, PDP governors over call for resignation of Tinibu. And then we have um, escalating price of cement infrastructural development under threat, red and cries out. NAAT protests exclusion from payment of retail varsity workers' salaries. Gunmen kill police, I mean, Plateau APC spokesperson and one other. Serap gives NNPCL seven days to account for missing $2.04 billion, 164 billion oil revenues. Tinubu's wrong policies cause of untold pain to Nigerians. And um, the nation newspaper, shed, the banner headline is talking about Akiti will lost an incredible voice. Jimo Ibrahim commensurates with Tinubu Ondo, APC, and Akiti family. And then you have the petrol tanker owner suspend product loading. Shetima Akume Akbabio Nwike orders, I mean, hardship over soon. Wow. Um, stimulates local production to end forex crisis. Wow, that's the much that we have on the independent and uh, the nation newspaper. Everything still boils down to incompetence in governance coming from every aspect of Nigeria. You know, when we're talking about um, the president of Nigeria meeting with La, the, the Lula da Silva, and then one of the headlines we saw energy power dropped to 3,000 megawatts. And they're even telling us that rationing will continue. I'm sure not every person that came into this studio that is in this studio had power from midnight till this, this time. So how do you get to develop an economy when you don't have power? So I think it's high time we, we get the ball rolling and know how best to fix this nation. Sincerely speaking, the, the issue of 15 trucks of food being diverted in canoes by smugglers and the rest of it, or people finding it very difficult, dollar at 1,700 naira per dollar. It, to me, it's crazy. I really don't understand how to do this. Now, you're telling me 63 commercial airplanes grounded. Where are we going? Where do, who do we, where do we begin to attack all these issues and where do we begin to seek solutions? Osita, your take on that. Okay, yeah, um, truth is, uh, well, most of these things are symptoms of a deeper uh, problem, economic problem. And like I said, you have the, um, the, the international uh, monetary policies uh, uh, contribution to our situation. And then we have some of the fiscal policies being made by our, our, our present administration's uh, contribution to it as well. Then also, we also have the the um, the contribution also made by people who are in, uh, people who are the bourgeoisie because I, I've come to understand that this issue of uh, the, the imbalance between are you are you excluding the executive? Yes, of course, I've mentioned that I said the administration, the fiscal policy is being made by, by the present administration. Yeah. That covers for the, the policy makers are the, the executive, executive, right? Uh, so, but my, my, the point I'm trying to make is this. Well, let's not just you know look at the, the symptoms, all right, all right? Let's look beyond the symptoms and also and, and go to the to the deep rooted causes of, of why we are where we are today, all right? Let's understand that for the fact that we still encourage the, the high cost of governance in this country, we're still going to find it difficult to contain some of these economic issues. Of course, so, uh, the, the removal of four subsidies hit us really hard. But let's also tell ourselves the truth that there was a need for this force of to be removed because people were ripping us blind, all right? People were, were robbing us blind in the name of force subsidy. At least I have some, some inside information with respect to how people will not, even, will not even transport petroleum, but they have some kind of arrangement with the people in the accountant general's office to sign off money in the name of that they've transported um, uh, 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 petroleum products to different parts of the country. And people were making billions of naira out of, uh, out of this criminality. So the removal of force of despite the fact that everybody is saying that the, the, the president did not provide a, a cushioning effect, a cushioning uh, policies, policies, or rather policies that will cushion the effect of 
the, the removal of forced subsidy. Let's understand that he was actually right in saying that forced subsidy was a major leakage to our economy. But beyond forced subsidy, how about high cost of living? Why do we still have the House of Senate and House of Representatives who are doing almost parallel duties? All right, up there. And if you check how much it takes to, 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 to uh, keep them running, both the, the salaries they are paid and the upkeeps they are given, whatever other perks they are given, and whatever other monies that, that leave the, the common coffers to their private pockets, you'd be amazed that it may be even more than what the general uh, citizenry gets. So, so if we don't cut down the cost of living or, or a cost of governance and if we don't address the issue of how uh, the dollar is being used, why is it that you do business in Nigeria and then you do that business with dollar? Why do we still encourage that? Why are expert rates being paid not with Naira but with dollar? But when you go to some other countries, you find out this, that people expert rates that go, they are paid in local currency. Why should it be so? So we need to start making some of these changes. We need to start making some of these adjustments, which is why I agree with. There was, this, uh, 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 there was this part, one of the headlines that was read out where somebody was saying that analysts, okay, yeah, analysts were saying that the forest crisis uh, requires fiscal sites major effort. Hmm. And it boils down to what I'm talking about right now. All right? If we don't make some adjustments, some of these policies, with what currency should we be doing business in, in Nigeria? Why should the Naira still be dependent on dollar for international trade? Why can't, um, why can't uh, our international trade be done on some other currencies? Since we've seen that doing it with, on, on the dollar is, 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 is actually uh, working against us. Why are we still listening to IMF? Since for all these uh, donkey years, when every time we've listened to IMF, and borrowed money from them and devalued our naira. We've continued to sink deeper into the, the economic mess we are in. That's why the fact that we are so blessed. Okay. So these are some of the adjustments we need to make okay. if we want to start um, seeing Just before uh, we go, Sabio, could it be that these people are working, you know, uh, in, in the secret? I mean, we don't know what they are doing because for Shetima, Akume, Babi, we can come in to tell us that hardship will be over soon. Probably they are doing something behind our back that we don't know about, and so maybe the, from before we know it, a miracle will happen, and all these things will be a thing of the past. <laughs> this is funny and laughable. So I think the 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 bulk of everything that is going on rests on them. So what they are doing is may giving us hope, and they don't even know the outcome of what they have said. And just as when the police was saying that we should not protest. Any form of protest is not allowed. Social unrest. Uh, social unrest is not allowed. Uh, it is their duty to provide security. And then they know most times social unrest would lead to insecurity and then crisis. So they try to contain those situations. And that is what I see clearly here. So, whatever they are saying, the next question we'll be asking them is how do you intend to make this happen? And for me, I see things differently from some of the uh, opinion by my co analysts. Just quickly, we when, don't have time when again. Talking about um, for a subsidy removal. All right. And personally, the, the citizens cannot pay for everything that the government is supposed to provide for them, whereas those that are in power are getting many things subsidized for them. There is imbalance. Until we begin to get sincerity of leadership, Nigeria is going no way. All right. All right. Well, on that note, we want to say a very big thank you to both of you. Uh, Osta, as I thank you so much for joining us on the review this morning. And also Samuel Ololo, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you very, very much for having me. All right. That's it on Press Review this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll take a short break, but we'll be right back. Stay with us.